So again, having the domestic here in Australia with the regional in the, in the Pacific and the domestic again in the countries that we're working with. So over the past four years, um, this program has evolved uh, and certainly um, the people and the, the organisations in those five sports that have been involved both domestically and regionally and in country uh, have come on quite a journey. Um, as you know, people like Will will attest to, um, it's been uh, it's been quite a journey in terms of the evolution of the sports and and their responsibilities in the region, um, augmenting a lot of the activity that they do, um, but also establishing a partnership with sports, um, both regionally and domestically, to be able to deliver a program that provides significant outcomes. Um, and I think what, what, what it's done is it's allowed a lot of sports a greater understanding of their role in developing countries um, beyond the provision of actual um, sporting activities. So uh, it's, it's been a significant period. Moving forward, what we're looking at doing obviously through this program is engaging more sports to be able to do the same sort of work, but with much greater focus. Um, the last two years and, and in particular the last year in, um, specifically, uh, with AusAid, we've called out specific development outcomes that we want sports to work towards. So we're making the assessments this time on sports in terms of their capacity and ability to deliver on those outcomes in, re in relation to the structures that they have and the delivery of their sport. With the view that over the next few years and the next period relating to these, these grants is that we'll be able to position sports, uh, much of, as we have done so far, but probably more so, into the future, positioning sports to be able to really be significant contributors in this area, regardless of whether there's government funding or not. So the PSP, as we call it, specifically, we'll uh, drill down a little bit into, into what it is, uh, and I'll give an overview, but Nick will be going into to much greater detail uh, later on. But it is a $14 million program. Um, it's over, over four years, um, from this year through to 2017. Um, it's, we're targeting countries, um, well we say targeting, but we have nine Pacific countries that we're, that we're working in. Um, the seven countries that uh, the country program's currently operating in, plus Cook Islands and PNG. Um, we've called these, these particular countries out um, because of its focus and its ability to marry with the aid program um, and, and also following from our history of engagement in the Pacific in those particular countries. It's a two-step competitive grants process and, and again, as I said, Nick will go into to greater detail about that, about the, um, the activity proposal stage which comes after the concept um, stage, which is what we're in at the moment, um, and what's expected of sports uh, and how we can engage with sports in, in, in assisting there. Um, the program is slightly less than it was last time, so it's 2.5 million uh, capped for each particular sporting um, activity uh, over the four year period. So it's, it's slightly less money and, and obviously for m the more sports we have, um, the less will be available. But uh, that's why we're going through this process of selection to ensure that we really hit the mark and ensure that we're engaging organisations that are able to deliver. Uh, Applications from NSOs, NSODs, partnered with regional federations. This is all outlined pretty clearly in the grant guidelines. Um, there's a strong expectation that sports, well, there is an expectation that sports will engage with their regional federations uh, and the national federations in the countries they're targeting. Um, this is respecting the international rules around sports governance, but also bringing together, as I said before, in partnership to make sure that uh, I guess the best of each of those organisations can come to the fore in a partnership to deliver the program. And current sports that are involved, the five sports I mentioned before, who are currently engaged in this program uh, up till 30th of June 2014, uh, will need to apply for this new round. And we have processes for integration of those, those sports should they be successful in the future. So moving on from the, the goals that I mentioned before, the objectives, um, again, and we're going to you know, probably be quite simple here in terms of participation in quality sport activities. Again, as I said before, we're relying on our partners, the sports, 
to provide a really solid basis of quality sport engagement and participation in the region. It's the foundation for a lot of the activities' success and it's certainly the foundation of what we believe is, is well-delivered sport, whether it's in a developed country or a developing country. Improved health-related behaviours of Pacific Islanders, focusing on increased levels of physical activity. Again, going back to that first goal around behaviours and non-communicable diseases, it's been highlighted um, that the role of sport, the role sport can play in this, is in increasing physical activity. So that's, that's one of the key objectives. And then, as I said before, in terms of, of, of disability, uh, it's not, just about, it's not just about inclusion of people with disability, it's about attitudes towards people with disability. And um, a lot of the programs that we've developed over the last six or seven years, more broadly within the uh, Australian Sports Outreach Program, has tried to significantly focus in this area and the impact that sport can have. The outcomes, and again, these are, these are areas, again, that underpin a lot of the, uh, the objectives and will probably speak more specifically to the desires of sport uh, to ensure that they run quality programs. We know that governance and management uh, are some of the underpinnings of quality sport uh, in terms of the way sport's delivered and managed. It's a challenge in, uh, in a lot of countries to ensure that that occurs correctly and, and in proportion to the delivery mechanisms of the sport, um, but this is also an important area. And again, when I'm mentioning these, a lot of these are in relation to the end provider, which is the national federation in the country and their interface with participants and other organisations. So the capacity to plan, run and monitor participation-based sports programs. Again, this is the stock and trade of, of, of sporting organisations and we expect to support it. Participation and leadership in sport activities by at-risk populations. Um, also people with disability, women and girls. Um, as I mentioned before, gender, is an expect gender equality and gender inclusion is an expected cross-cutting area in all of our programs um, and we expect it to be a significant part of, of any program that is delivered. And we sort of added at the bottom, but um, probably the collaboration between uh, Pacific sports organisations is one of the keys to success. As I mentioned previously, a lot of this started off under the premise and the support of a structure around partnerships. And what we've seen is the way those partnerships work, the communication between the national, regional and NSO here in Australia is crucial to the success of this program and it probably can't be understated enough. So in practical terms, what does it look like? Um, initiatives can look like, for example, running mass participation programs, uh, with a particular focus on, on a particular area uh, and one of these examples is gender inclusion. So having the program delivered in such a way in developing countries that it's inclusive of those targeted populations or those populations uh, that we're trying to derive an outcome through. Um, that can be combined with health messaging but in this particular case uh, it, was a, it was a gender inclusion strategy. Again, a mass participation initiative, um, and this, this is in a particular environment, like in a schools-based environment, um, rugby league in a specific country in PNG, rugby union over a number of countries with school-based activities that link the sport with health outcomes. So we, we can go into detail later on about what some of these look like, but I'm just trying to give you a bit of a flavour. Targeted populations. Um, some sports have been very successful in, in running broader programs, but within that, looking at subset populations that address specific development needs. Uh, in this case, um, looking at non-communicable diseases and particularly the, uh, the incidence rate in, in females, older females um, in the Pacific. Sometimes these programs don't have to cost too much either. They can be run quite effectively, ensuring that the partnerships are there and the linkages are happening and we're going to go into some detail about linkages with the country programs and also opportunities for non-government organisations to link with sports. And as I said before, the underpinning for a lot of this is good governance, good management and the ability to develop people. So coaches, officials, we're expecting that programs will focus on 
having an ability to deliver that sort of backbone, if you like, to the delivery of sport. So that's a bit of an overview. Um, what we'll do now is I'll hand over to Rob Regent, who will give you a bit of the Pacific context, uh, and then he will hand over to Alison, uh, and then Nick. So, Rob, 